morning and welcome to our thoughts from the vicarage this morning. Today, the 31st of January, is the day that we uh, celebrate Candle Mass, the day when we remember Jesus being presented in the temple as a little tiny baby and that he is the light of the world, the light of revelation to the Gentiles and to the Jewish people. But first of all, I'm going to pray the prayer, the collect for this week for Candle Mass. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Luke's gospel and is, it is the presentation of Jesus in the temple when he was just 40 days old. So hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male should be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of, two, of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in Je the Jesus child to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is, is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to whom all were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. 
when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 17 of the books of the Old Testament are written by prophets such as Isaiah, who we hear a lot of in Advent, or Nehemiah, famous for getting the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt. The last prophet of the Old Testament is maybe less well known and is called Malachi, and his name means my messenger. The prophets were all messengers of God, bringing important and often challenging messages to their, the people of their day. In the verses of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, another reading for today, Malachi warns that the covenant, the Messiah for whom the people of Israel are waiting, the hope that causes them delight, will actually be a challenge. He tells the people to prepare for the sudden arrival of the Lord, the one for whom they are waiting, that the presence of the Lord will bring purification and refining from their sinful ways, particularly for the descendants of Levi, the priests. And there will be judgment for those who go against the oppressed, the widow, the alien, for any who do not fear the Lord. The Lord who will come will be like the refiner's fire, the ultimate cleansing soap. He is holy and so who can stand in his presence? Malachi shared this message about 400 years before the birth of Christ. There's a 400 year gap between the last prophecies of the Old Testament and the start of the New Testament. And yet Malachi said that the Lord, who the people sought, would suddenly come to the temple. The book of Malachi is the end of the Old Testament and the New Testament starts with the life of Jesus recorded in the four Gospels including Luke. In our Gospel reading today, Luke tells the story of Jesus being presented in the temple as a baby. Jesus would have been 40 days old when Simeon and Anna saw him in the temple. We know this because the Jewish law stated that the mother of a male child had to go to the temple for purification when the baby was 40 days old. It was longer if it was a girl baby. You can read about it in Leviticus chapter 12. In order for the mother to be declared clean after childbirth, an offering of a lamb and a pigeon, or for people who couldn't afford that, a pair of pigeons or a pair of doves, doves was made. This would also have been the time for the dedication of the firstborn son to God. You can read about that in Exodus chapter 13. One of the baby boys once the baby boys had been dedicated to God, then the parents could redeem them for five shekels. It seems from Luke's account that Mary and Joseph did not redeem Jesus in this way. A bit like Samuel in the Old Testament, Samuel was not redeemed, but instead was dedicated to God for a life of service in the temple. Once he was weaned, Samuel went to live in the temple with the priest Eli. Maybe Mary and Joseph did not redeem Jesus because they knew who he was, that he was actually the son of God. And so they had no expectation of redeeming him for themselves. Whatever the reason for this, we know that Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple for purification and that Jesus grew up in a family that meticulously observed the law, the Jewish law. Because in these 18 verses, Luke mentions five times that Mary and Joseph were doing what was written, what was customary, what was needed under the law of the Lord. They were a God-fearing, strict Jewish family. Whilst they were in the temple, both Simeon and Anna recognised and then testified to just who this baby was. Thinking especially of the testimony of Simeon, we hear that Jesus was to be the means of salvation for both Jews and Gentiles. Simeon says these beautiful words, My eyes have seen your salvation, 
which you have prepared in the presence of the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. These words of Simeon have been uh, made into various classical pieces of music. They're known as the Nunc Dimittis. And you'll be able to see uh, some references to YouTube uh, versions of the Nunc Dimittis if you'd like to listen to that. Beautiful settings, beautiful words. And I recommend you have a look on YouTube, listen to some of those uh, maybe later on today. Simeon also knew that Jesus' calling would not be without great cost, both to Jesus and to Mary. Simeon testified that Jesus would bring light and truth and that by doing so, people would reach times of critical decisions, decisions to move towards God or to move away from God. Whenever a light is turned on, shadows are always created when I sit and get ready to record these thoughts from the vicarage, I have to think about the lighting and the shadows. The law of physics detect, dictates that where is, there is light, there will be shadows. When the sun shines, when we're lucky enough to see the sunshine, shadows appear. And Simeon knew that once Jesus grew up and shone his light into his world, shadows would appear and critical decisions would be made. Simeon and Anna gave testimony as to who this baby was and that what his future held when just a few days old. And his identity fulfilled the prophecy given by Malachi and other prophets over 400 years before Jesus was built, born. The words from the letter to the Hebrews that Margaret read to us, these come several years after the life of Jesus and so after Jesus' death on the cross his resurrection and his ascension. The writer reminds the Hebrews and all who have read these words since that Jesus' death destroyed the power of death and means that those who live in fear and slavery can be set free. For Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect atonement. He's provided the salvation the redemption for Jews and Gentiles alike, because he is the light of revelation for the Gentiles and glory for the people of Israel. Jesus' life and ministry shine light in the dark places and that also creates shadows. Jesus, Jesus brings light and truth that cause us to make choices that move us towards God or away from God. And all of us have some testimony about who and how we see Jesus. Malachi's testimony was that the Lord would come to the temple and his holiness would be purifying, just like a silversmith's refining fire. Simeon's testimony was that even as a baby, he knew that Jesus was the salvation for the world for both Jew and Gentile. Anna's testimony was that Jesus was the redemption of Jerusalem and the writer to the Hebrews testified that Jesus was the merciful high priest whose sacrifice made the atonement for sinful people everywhere. I wonder what your testimony about Jesus is. What is your story of his love and mercy? How has he helped cleanse you from ways of life that have been maybe harmful or even destructive? How have you experienced his salvation? Sharing our stories of how Jesus has influenced our lives is such an encouraging thing to do. Sharing what we know and experience of him is such an important part of our faith. I'd love for us to share our testimonies, our stories with one another. It doesn't have to be a 10 minute sermon. In fact, it's probably better if it isn't, although it could be. It just needs to be a real and honest statement of who you know Jesus to be. And I'd love to include one of those each week from now up until Easter. 
I'll be asking some of you if you would share with us. But if you know that you're happy to do that, then volunteer and drop me a line or an email or a phone message or something. Because people's testimonies encourage us and they build up our faith. We've heard some wonderful declarations of who Jesus is in our readings today. I pray that you'll be ready to share with us who Jesus is to you over the coming weeks. And so now Emma is going to lead us in some prayers and some intercessions for our world this week. As members of the body of Christ, bound together in his love, let us pray together now, confident in God's promise to be amongst us. Holy God, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is so much needed in our world. We pray for all church leaders and give thanks for those with a gift for sharing the good news in the way they live. Give us all courage and the willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful. You alone are our God and we trust in you. Holy God, we pray for all world leaders that in working together in your strength they may strive for what is good, just and honest. Give all nations and peoples of our world respect and love for creation so that we learn to take responsibility for the resources we share and the universe we inhabit. Give us courage to make good decisions, even if they involve us in conflict or discomfort. You alone are our God, and we trust in you. Holy God, we pray for our families and our friends, that we may be transformed and renewed through the richness of your presence. Give us deeper insight, more awareness and greater love for one another. You alone are our God and we trust in you. Holy God, we bring to you those we know who are suffering with prolonged illness, debilitating pain and emotional distress. Lay your hands on them to bring relief and healing, courage to live through this dark time and the inner strength which only you can give. You alone are our God and we trust in you. Holy God, we pray for those making the journey through death and for those who have died to this earthly life. Thank you for all they have given us. Comfort those who miss them and through your mercy receive us all in our time <clears throat> to live in the peace and joy of your eternity. You alone are our God and we trust in you. Holy God, we thank you for making yourself known to us in the many blessings of life and most of all in the person of Jesus the Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Emma. Take care. Have a good rest of the day. 
Look after yourselves. God bless. Thank you.